What's up, Yens guys? Welcome back to Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. As you can tell, I'm far from Pennsylvania. What that means is I finally made it to my family vacation. Spending a week with good people, good food, in that view, absolutely fantastic. Now I've been fortunate enough to be able to do some fishing while I was away here in Florida. So I thought I would do a quick episode on things that I've learned recently on fishing from the beach. So hopefully you guys like this video on a few tips and tricks that'll help you guys catch more fish while you're fishing the beach, particularly in the Gulf of Mexico. All right guys, there's just a few tips that I wanna talk about that have kind of helped me this week. So first and foremost, we're talking about fishing somewhere where you're not really familiar with. Like I am terrible at fishing off the beach. Now I've had rips and I've had fish on, but I've never actually landed a fish in the Gulf of Mexico. So I thought it'd be cool this trip to try to focus on that, try to learn some new things that'll help me just kind of develop as an angler when I'm on vacation here fishing on the beach. So a couple of things that have helped me. First and foremost, I visited a number of bait shops in the area. Now, I only really found one bait shop that was willing to kind of help me from a beginner standpoint, getting set up with my gear and also kind of transferring knowledge to kind of help me be successful. And that bait shop, as you guys can see there in my shirt, is Dogfish Tackle Marine. Now, Dogfish Tackle Marine is a huge bait shop. It's sort of like a Gander Mountain, only for fishing. So when I pulled up, I was pretty excited to go inside because naturally they have a ton of tackle and they have a ton of gear. And I gotta tell you, the staff inside were absolutely premier. They were really bent on customer service and they did a great job helping me get set up with my gear at a reasonable price. They also gave me some discounts online and some other things just for buying equipment. So it was a really good experience at Dogfish. And if you guys are in the area here near Clearwater Beach, I would recommend checking them out over a lot of the local bait shops because they really know what they're doing. So first tip for you guys is find a solid bait shop and make sure you get as much information from them as possible and that'll translate into you guys catching more fish from the surf. All right, tip number two. You guys can tell I'm wearing polarized sunglasses. Now, if you guys are anglers, you know the importance of polarized sunglasses. Polarized sunglasses give you visibility into the water. And why that's important here fishing from the beach really two or three reasons. First reason, I like to know what's around me. Now we're in the state of Florida, so there are sharks in the ocean, obviously. Now the chances of me running into a shark are slim to none. More than likely, I'm never gonna see a shark on the beach. However, the polarized sunglasses give me visibility into the water, I can see what's around me, and it's really given me the opportunity to see things like stingrays and fish and bait fish and all kinds of things in the water. So polarized sunglasses, you absolutely need them when you're fishing from the surf. All right guys, for an additional tip, I wanna just go over the gear that I'm currently using to fish from the beach. So the guys at Dogfish were extremely helpful in putting together a combo and some lures that would be effective from the beach. So first and foremost, I just wanna show you the raw and reel combo I got. It's a Dawa Sweep Fire and it's a medium action seven foot rod. And you can see here, Sweep Fire 702. In addition to that, it's got the Shimano FX 4000 FB reel combo. Um, this is a decent little combo. And actually it was kind of interesting because it was only about 25 bucks. So that's a good starter rod. Um, it's a two piece rod, again, seven foot really solid for fishing the Gulf of Mexico. So on this rod, you got 30 pound Power Pro braid with a 30 pound mono leader. Now, in addition to that, some of the lures, um, it's always important for you guys to have a good pair of pliers slash scissors. So I picked that up, but from a lure standpoint, we got a couple things here. We got a jerk bait, we got a spoon, and we got a swim bait. The jerk bait, it's kind of like a little popper. It's like a rip and go. Now, if you guys can see that, it's silver, tube, chartreuse head, orange head, gold body. This particular one, chartreuse and silver, it, it works as a jerk bait. So it's heavy, it sinks quickly, and you can rip these very, very quickly in the water. I had a rip on this one earlier in the week. This is a good solid bait for you guys. And they sell them in three packs for about 10 bucks. In addition to that, 
talk about spoons. Now, there's a lot of jacks running along the beach, and jacks like spoons. So I got these really awesome squid spoons, and these are going to be three different sizes. You got a two, you got a one, and you got a zero. Good shine, good hooks on them, good solid little spoons for the beach. But the real deal has been these live target swim baits. Now this particular one is a herring pattern and they typically say to use these baits when the water is dirty. For clear, for clear water, like fishing from the beach, you wanna go with a bait that looks like that. Now this bait is, is basically silver and it's got a green hue and it looks exactly like a sardine. Now in addition to that gear, I got some leaders, I got some treble hooks, and I got some split rings. These particular swim baits do not come with treble hooks. I put a treble hook on there to increase my hookup rate, and of course you need a split ring for that. So with that said, this is the gear that I'm currently using to fish from the beach. You got your seven foot rod, you got a couple different baits, jerk bait, spoons, and swim bait. And these have been pretty good to me this week, so. Okay, when you're fishing from the beach, a lot of times it's easy to kind of lose yourself in where you're at. You're constantly walking up and down the stretches of beaches like that and it makes it kind of difficult because if you find an area where you're catching fish you obviously want to be able to pinpoint that. So what I've been doing this week is I've been fishing in front of my condo. Hopefully you guys can see that with the sun. And what I've been doing is I've been picking a point on the condo to kind of line myself up. So I know that I've been catching fish off the far right pillar of my condo. So that's kind of helped me set myself up every morning and usually put myself in a position to at least hook a few fish. Now another tip for you guys when you're fishing the Gulf of Mexico. The water's pretty clear and hopefully you guys can see this. There's a school of bait fish swimming in front of me. So anytime you guys can locate bait fish in the water, you guys see these little silver shimmers Anytime you guys can locate bay fish in the water, you're going to put yourself in a position to catch more fish. Big fish, chase bait fish. You put yourself near the bait fish, you're going to put yourself in a position to catch more fish. So I just want to take a minute to continue to talk about the bait fish here. Um, when I talked to the gentleman at the bait shop, one of the things that they had mentioned to me was this time of year you get a lot of bait fish that are white or silver. Now. They look like sardines, and this is about the same size. So you got about a two and a half inch bait or a two inch bait there. This is a swim bait, so you got the paddle tail. Now the bait fish that are swimming around me currently look exactly like this. So when you guys are fishing from the beach, the recommendation is to go with something light like this. Now some of the darker shads in this pattern is going to be better for, for murky or darker water. So. When you guys are fishing from the beach, you're obviously trying to match the hatch. Now, the other thing that I've learned this week is when I'm ripping this swim bait in, it's almost like pike or musky fishing. And I say that because I've had a lot of follows. And with my polarized sunglasses, I've been able to track fish as they come in. And I actually hooked and landed a snook basically on a figure eight. It sounds ridiculous, I know, but it actually worked and I have the picture to prove it. So with that said, when you guys are fishing the beach like this and you're out on a sandbar, try to take a look at the bait fish that are running in that local area and match the hatch.
So another tip for you guys, when you're fishing the ocean, one of the most important aspects of fishing the ocean is tides, high tide and low tide. In addition to that, you have sunrise and sunset. Usually the four best times during the day to do some fishing on the beach. Now, I know nothing about tides. I can't stand here and say that I'm some genius when it comes to tidal current. So, go out to your app store on your smartphones and find yourself a solid tidal app. There's one that does local tides, which I've been using this week. It gives you the exact time frame of when the tides happen. So high and low tide. Bottom line with tides, the water level fluctuates. You guys know this. However, it's not about the water level fluctuating as much as it is you getting your bait into deep enough water for those fish that you're targeting to actually eat. So again, I'm not gonna pretend that I know all about this stuff, but go out there, pay attention to your tides, download the app and fish sunrise and sunset, and that will definitely contribute to an overall positive fishing experience. So really what it boils down to is trying to learn the beach. Now, it's impossible for me to tell you guys exactly how to do that because I have no idea. But I've done a lot of research in the last couple of days. And what I found is, you know, fish relate to structure in the ocean basically the same way they relate into a lake. And what that means is you have troughs and you have sandbars and you have cuts. Now, the sandbar is going to be, you know, throughout the body of water. So really, I'm standing on a sandbar right now. I can see an additional sandbar out there. And in between is a trough. And that's the deeper water between two sandbars. That's where this bait fish hangs out and that's where the bigger fish hang out to feed. So my thought for you guys is learn where the breaks are at, pay attention to the waves, find your sandbars and fish the troughs in between them. Now there's one trough in particular that I've been fishing this week to my left and that's where I've done the majority of my damage. Now I've hooked into about eight fish from the beach and I was only able to get one of them landed. I've had a redfish on, I've had a lot of snook on, and I've had at least two smaller tarpons. So it seems to me that those fish are hanging out in the troughs in the middle of the breaks and in between the sandbars. And they're after these big sardines. So again, you guys can locate those areas on your local beach. You're gonna be productive. And hopefully that translates into you catching a fish. You know, a lot of people are talking about the red tide this year, particularly in Florida. Um, the red tide was pretty bad. When we showed up here a couple days ago, <clears throat> you could still see some remnants of it. There were some dead fish on, on the beach and having a, kind of a hard time breathing when I was running. Um, but the one thing I'll say is they've done a great job managing it. Um, you can't really protect a lot of the fish that are gonna kind of get that bacteria. It's not really that deadly to humans, um, unless you have some kind of weird allergy. You know, you can breathe it in. So from a red tide standpoint, Florida's pretty clean right now. I know it was pretty bad. Some of the locals have said it was bad. You know, I've seen some of the dead fish on the beach. Uh, but in all honesty, you know, it's something that I'm not really worried about. I'm out here, I have an immune system. The ocean has bacteria in it. It's just one of those facts of life. So, you know, for those of you that are worried about red tide or thinking, why am I fishing in the ocean when there's red tide? You know, it's really not that big of a concern for me. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, it did damage the fish population. But as I've seen this week, there's a tremendous amount of fish in the Gulf of Mexico. So I think that it will continue to recover as a fishery. And those, those damaging blows with those high numbers of fish, you know, hundreds of thousands of fish washing up on the beach, that will eventually be restored. So, uh, you know, we can't really do anything about nature, but we can do everything we can from a conservation standpoint and from a disease standpoint to try to clean that stuff up so that, you know, the fish that are not affected will continue to not be affected and, and just live out their life. So again, thank you all for your time and for your positive and negative feedback. I really appreciate it. It's helped me to continue to grow as an angler and I greatly appreciate you guys. So hopefully everybody can get out there fishing soon or maybe even get on vacation because it's exactly what the doctor ordered. All right guys, take care.